Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I should let you know we also have a TV audience in this case. Don't mind the cameras. They'll, they'll find you. Um, this is a, an, an extraordinary opportunity that one really only gets at Davos, where we have four heads of government from literally four different continents, four corners of the world, and yet they are all grappling with the same crisis, the same problem. Uh, and what we're going to try to do is to have a conversation about their perspectives on it and the road ahead. Uh, I'm not going to spend a great deal of time introducing them because they are extraordinarily well, well known. President Calderon is, of course, the President of Mexico, Prime Minister Brown of Great Britain, Prime Minister Han of South Korea, and President Motlande is the President of South Africa. Mexico went through its own pretty wrenching crisis in the early 1990s. What lessons uh, should we learn from that? What would you recommend? You know, the United States is currently trying to decide on, on this good bank, bad bank issue to have an aggregator bank or whether outright nationalization is the right answer. What, what does Mexico's history tell us? Well, first, uh, you are right. Uh, we, in Latin American countries, uh, suffered in the past several crises. Uh, Andres Velasco, Minister of Chile, was saying last night that we suffered like over 30 crises in 25 years. So we are experts <laughs> in financial crisis. Help us, for goodness <laughs> sakes. <laughs> we can do something, for instance. Uh, one is, well, we, uh, yes, uh, we, we have lessons. Uh, we learn from that. One is absolutely important with a sense of urgency to save or to clean the banking system. We did already 20, 10 years ago in Mexico, it cost like, I don't know, 15 or 20 points of GDP. But today, our banking system is really sound. The rate of capitalization, capital versus assets in banking, Mexican banking system is over 14%. So it's a, a really sound system. Uh, well, the second is, uh, Prime Minister is right, you need to do something quickly with bad assets in the banks. Probably the recommendation is uh, doing so, it's important to establish right incentives in order to recover in time, uh, in some years, the real value of those assets. Because if you don't put those incentives, you can lose the value totally. And third is you need to, uh, Prime Minister, was talking about risk, you need to allocate risk carefully among the stockholders, among the bankers, the creditors, of course the governments. But again, it's a question of uh, incentives, economic incentives. Another, uh, we, need to, we need to put in place counter-cyclical policies, fiscal and monetary policies. Ten years ago, we were not able to do so because we were, uh, we were not prepared for that. But today, we have also sound public finances. For instance, our foreign reserves, almost $90 billion, are like three times our foreign debt. We covered already all the payments for foreign debt for this year. We went to the market in December, and we borrowed one uh, one billion dollars uh, in the market. So, uh, what today we are in the different position, and we are able to put in place or to implement countercyclical policies. And, and what you mean by that is public spending. It, it, yes, it, uh, President Calderon. What do you want to see the G20 do? What specifically at this point? What kind of international coordination <clears throat> is the key to get countries out of this economic crisis? Well, there are a, a set of technical instructions, if I can say that, to weigh out this crisis. But the problem is, as the Prime Minister was saying, there is a lack of uh, confidence, a lack of trust. So a really strong leadership is required. So the first thing is leadership. Who should that come from? President Obama? Of course, uh, Prime Minister <laughs> Obama. <laughs> but also President Obama. And that would be a very important difference. Now, the, well, the problem started in the U.S., it's the epicenter, and the problem coincides with the lack of leadership in that nation. 
whatever the reasons were, now there is strong leadership in the United States. And the people need leadership in every single country, and especially in the American society. So this uh, meeting in London will be the opportunity to build and put together leadership among the nations. Second, coordination. I absolutely agree. counter cyclical policies, fiscal and monetary policies are crucial, but it's not enough if those policies are not coordinated. Because the effort of one country will be in favor of the, of the neighbor, but uh, we can lose a lot of energy on that. If we have a common crisis in all the world, different from 98, we need the effort of the governments together. So the second is coordination. The third, decisions. For instance, we need to recapitalize not only banking system, but also multilateral institutions. Like the IMF and the World Absolutely. Bank. Absolutely. World Bank, IMF, Interdeveloped uh, Bank in, Latin, in America, and so on. Why? We need to redesign them in order to provide, provide more voice to another emerging economies, but also we need to recapitalize them because the inflow of foreign investment to emerging economies, for instance in Latin America, and the foreign credit is, uh, went down quickly. So the only way to substitute those uh, flows is through multilateral institutions. So we can take in this meeting leadership, which is the most important thing for me, second, coordination, and third, decisions about uh, several institutions. Let's talk about that last danger you, talk, uh, you mentioned, uh, Prime Minister. Uh, President Calderon, when one hears all this impressive uh, array of activity, all these governments around the world are going to spend enormous amounts of money, fiscal stimulus, they've all read their John Maynard Keynes, they know what to do. And yet, if you look at these fiscal stimuli, if you look at these various programs, it's a lot of subsidies to industries. It's a lot of what would, one would have called protectionism. Is the movement toward free trade imperiled by this massive outlay of government support for various national industries? Oh, one of the things that we can do in London is to reject with facts and decision protectionism because that could be the most dangerous threat to the new situation. We need to learn from the crisis in the 20s and 30s. Uh, protectionism delay the way out of the crisis. And we can learn from the 98 crisis. Open economies went out quickly from this situation. So we need to be careful about that. In Mexico, for instance, we are reducing even more our tariffs to the half. Last month we took the, that decision and the idea is to open the markets. The idea is to give an opportunity to the market to recover the real economy. And that was my message to the American president in our meeting in January. We need to pro provide or give an opportunity to the market. We need to integrate uh, in a more competitive way or market. So we need to reject protectionism. You said this to President Obama? Yes. What did he say? He was agreed that the benefits of trade in terms of job creations, in terms of investment, in terms of upgrading the competitiveness of the region has been and will be very useful for both Mexico and the United States. And we need to work together in order to take care about the protectionism threatness in this particular moment.